Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I'm Alana Marie and in this video we're going to look at how we can act scared. This is great for any horror movies you might be doing or any scenario where you have to play a character who is maybe being threatened or robbed or shouted at or just generally scared by another character or object or maybe someone who has phobias. So without further ado, let's begin. There are two overarching types of fear. One, lingering terror, and two, quick fight or flight type fear. Within these overarching types, you get subtypes like nervousness, Grandad? defensiveness, Grandad? terror, <laughs> cowering in fear, <laughs> screaming in shock. <laughs> and so on. Now I've done some research and one way in which you can generate a sensation of fear um, is via your imagination. That's right, actually scare yourself. We're venturing into method acting here and it depends what you're like as a person but maybe this isn't something for everyone. I found a useful quote actually from Backstage Magazine which sums this point up nicely. Uta Hagen in A Challenge for the Actor makes it sound easy. She has a rodent phobia. So she simply imagines a mouse or a rat and promptly feels ice cold shivers, shudders of revulsion and a compulsion to scream, leap in the air or run away. Hagen says imagining your most personally horrifying spectacle, whether it be snakes, spiders, roaches, maggots, worms, works for everyone. A doctor told her that such phobias are natural, a compressed symbol for the everyday and lifelong fears that we repress or don't understand. George Orwell knew all about it. Remember the dreaded Room 101 in 1984? I think if you have a phobia and a strong imagination, and you're okay with this, then use it. Using your imagination in this way is very effective for lingering terror. Personally, I've tried this technique and it doesn't work for me. I've imagined super hard a spider and they always end up looking really cute in my head. I just can't scare myself enough, but that's not a problem because there are other ways of generating fear. This next technique is really interesting and can be really useful for acting instant terror and shock and even genuine screaming at jump scare moments. <laughs> it sounds a bit contradictory but the idea is to make yourself super calm. You are so calm so that when the shocking thing happens in the scene you react to it involuntarily. You mustn't anticipate the shocking thing at all. Once you anticipate it you won't be as shocked. You'll have to feign shock and this will look like you're acting and looking like you're acting is just bad acting. Again Backstage Magazine explains this technique well. They explain how actress Wendy Phillips has no really powerful phobias. The key for her is physical relaxation, getting as far away as she can mentally and physically from the scary event to be, followed by total commitment. You can't psychologically sneak up on it, she said. In a scene in the film Bugsy, Phillips had to slap Warren Beatty. She said they must have done the take 50 times. Each time he came to the scene with complete relaxation, no anticipation. She said every take that slap worked for him emotionally. I don't know how he did it. I don't know if I could do it. The more relaxed and innocent you can get yourself, the better chance you have of reacting involuntarily. So there you have it. The more relaxed you can be, the more frightened you'll be. Kind of works. I guess it makes sense. It's, it's like scaring yourself relatively speaking. It's all about the relation between the previous state of feeling calm to the shock. You can psychologically trick yourself into getting scared. If the aforementioned techniques are too weird for you, <laughs> then not to worry. There are other techniques and headspaces you can explore in order to learn how to act scared. One of my preferred things to do is to think about the status of the characters in the scene. Basically, in every situation where a character is acting scared, there is something scary. It's logical. Even if there's nothing physical and the character is hallucinating, I keep seeing people. There is something to be scared of. A good way to approach any role that involves two opposing energies, such as a scared character 
and a scary character, is to think about the status of these opposing characters. One is high status, the scary character, and the other is lower status, the scared character. Now, as there are different types of fear, there are different levels of lower status. It's not, well, it's never a simple case of high status, low status. There is an in-between. For instance, someone acting defensive is their way of fighting to regain a higher status, even though that is not a successful way to do it. All right. Status is something that can be expressed through body language. For instance, a lower status character feeling nervous would fidget and probably have tensed muscles. A higher status character feeling confident would be physically open and have relaxed shoulders. This leads me on to my next tip, body language. So there are different types of fear, as I've already mentioned, and therefore there are different types of ways of expressing these different types of fear through the body. As I've already mentioned as well, a character who is scared is of a lower status, and lower status characters have specific body language. Generally speaking, they do not touch other characters, or act comfortable when they are touched by other characters. This might be a gentle pat on the shoulder, it need not be anything serious. A lower status character would not initiate contact easily. This could be eye contact, physical contact, verbal contact. Their body is physically closed off and protected. They might have hunched shoulders or be looking down. They might fidget a lot. They might touch their hair, clothes, face, so on while they are talking or being observed by another character. Basically having attention on themselves makes them uncomfortable. In some cases they'd be internally squirming and this excess energy might unleash itself into fidgeting or nervous laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an example of these characteristics in this short clip. Here I play a character who is acting scared uh, and she's very scared of her surroundings. Notice the tension in the body as she walks through the shopping centre. How she's closing her body off and doesn't want to be touched or interacted with. Not only is she trying not to initiate contact, even though everyone's like staring at her, but she's attempting to avoid it altogether. And weirdly they won't start looking at her. Anyway, she fidgets, she plays with her hands and touches her head as she walks. My next technique looks at how someone scared might talk. Characters who are scared tend to demonstrate incomplete thoughts. That's her! Do you not see it? The... For instance, they'll rarely finish a sentence in a complete thought or breath. Did you... So how are you... I'm exaggerating here, obviously. They also move a lot more erratically than a character of higher status or than the character doing all the scaring. Got another example here. Notice how in this scene my character stutters. Wait, it, it just... She can't seem to finish a complete sentence. The panic distracts her. Well, thanks for watching. This has just been a bit about how to act scared. The techniques in this video are by no means exhaustive and you might come up with your own. If you do have more techniques and would like to discuss them, then feel free to leave them in the comments down below and let's start a lovely discussion about acting techniques. Likewise, if you have any questions or comments, then feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. So, <laughs> bye for now.